Hey friend, Nick here, and in this video, I wanna show you how to use an app called Handbrake, which is a free app for Windows and Mac that you can use to either convert video files that don't work with your editing software, or to compress videos just to make them smaller and take up less space. Now, this is not a full tutorial. Handbrake can do a lot of cool things, and it has really fine-grained control over a lot of settings that I don't wanna go into, and honestly, I don't fully understand a lot of those. Um, but for, for the purpose of just compressing videos so that they take up less space or converting from one format to another, that's what I'm gonna cover in this video. So if this is something you wanna learn more about, hit that like button and let's keep going. Now, I mostly use this tool to compress videos for online storage. Someone once told me that if your data doesn't exist in two places, your data doesn't exist. Meaning if something, if it was only on one hard drive and only existed in one spot and something happened to that hard drive, whether your hard drive failed or you accidentally saved over it or somehow the file got corrupted and you don't have that in another spot, it is gone forever. I'm not gonna go too crazy here with file management and all that stuff, but I do wanna just say, make sure that you save a copy on another hard drive and put it online somewhere some kind of cloud backup service, whether you use iCloud or Dropbox or some other tool, Google Drive is a good one too. Make sure that you have a copy somewhere other than in your house on a hard drive. Another benefit of Handbrake is to be able to take different types of files and convert them to a similar file type. So it's easier to manage, easier to edit. And sometimes you might have a file that your editing software can't handle and Handbrake becomes a really handy tool to convert that video file into something that your editing system can use. For instance, this Sony camera that I use will save the file as an MXF, and iMovie can't read that. Now, I don't use iMovie, I use Premiere Pro, uh, but some clients use iMovie, and if I shot video for them and just gave them the MX MXF files, they won't be able to edit that in iMovie. They would have to convert it first, and then they can edit it in iMovie. And that's actually what prompted this video. I had someone ask me, how can I edit these MXF files? Well, you have to convert it first. All right, let's jump into the computer and I'm gonna show you how to use it. When you first open Handbrake, it's gonna ask you what file you wanna convert. Um, and in case you accidentally close that, Open Source does the same thing. Click Open Source. So here, let's say I wanna process just this one file. Let's pick a smaller one like that guy. So it'll be faster. So let's say I wanna convert this one file. I'm gonna click open. It scans it and does some stuff. The next thing I do is pick a preset and then I'm gonna tweak settings after that. So I wanna pick somewhere that's in the middle that it's not super fast because that's gonna be low quality but not super high quality because that's gonna be really slow and it's not gonna save me that much space on my uh, Dropbox account. So I'm gonna pick somewhere in the middle. I usually start with fast, 1080p 30, and then I tweak the settings based on the source video file. Go to the dimensions tab. Um, I, I just leave this whatever it is. Now, occasionally you'll might, you might wanna downsize a file. So if you shot a video in 4K and you just wanna save a backup in 1080p because it'll take a lot less space, you could change that here. So you could just enter the settings, whatever you want it to be. So if it was 4K, you could change this to 1920 by 1080. Um, you can turn that oops, off. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but this gives you more control and it keeps keeps the aspect ratio what it needs to be. Or if you shot it in 1920 and you wanna put it in uh, 1280, just to take up less space, then you could do that. But I'm gonna leave mine at 1920 by 1080. Then we go to video. And I leave this usually at uh, 264. There are other options. 10-bit um, is going to be a little bit higher quality, more color depth. 265 is a newer codec. But honestly, most of the time, I just leave 264 because it's fine. That's what the majority of videos are anyway. It's not a big deal. Frame rate is very important, and I pick same as source. So that way you don't have to guess or investigate what it was shot in. It just whatever it was is what it's gonna pick. Then I pick constant frame rate so that it matches and it stays the same. You don't have to know what a lot of this stuff means. You just need to, need to know what to set it to. 
Next, I'll pick average bitrate, and I'll pick a value maybe um, 10,000 is, is pretty good. It's not gonna be, the higher end is more like 16,000. Um, on the lower end, more like 5,000. So you can play with this if you want, and it's all this really does is affects how big the file size is gonna be, and it affects the quality. So somewhere in the middle works fine. Um, Eight to 10,000 is, is a pretty good range. If you have the time, you can process this with two pass where it'll it'll go through one time and do an analysis and then it'll go through a second time. It'll be slightly higher quality and a little bit more reliable. But if you're short for time, you can uncheck two pass and just do one pass. So for now, I'm just gonna do one pass. And profile, I would pick high, leave the rest of that the same. On the audio tab, make sure that it's mixed down to stereo. Sample rate, I like 48. It's gonna be a higher quality. Bit rate, 320. So the sound will be um, higher quality. The last thing we need to do, and the order doesn't really make sense, but make sure that you save it with maybe compressed or something else in, in the title so that you know when you look at it that it's a compressed version and not the full-blown version. You could put H.264, just put something in there so you know that it's the compressed. You could short, just do like comp. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Just so you know it's different. And then browse to where you wanna save it and choose that. So when you're all set, hit start. And now it's gonna encode. All right, so we are done. Don't close it yet. What I would do is save this as a preset. Compress for backup. So now the next time I come in to do this, I don't have to set all those settings all over again. I can just pick my own preset, bam, and I got it. All right, so the original was this 1085 file, 332.9 megabytes, and the compressed version is 742 megabytes. Now I've done side-by-side -side comparisons, and I gotta say, I don't really notice a difference. Maybe if you looked super closely, there could be some slight differences, maybe in like really extreme detailed shots or something, but I think overall, no one's gonna notice the difference even if you had to use this instead of your original. I don't think most people are gonna notice, especially if you're making how-to videos and just educational videos, teaching people things. No one's gonna notice or care that you edited with a compressed version and not your full quality version. Next, I wanna show you how to back up a whole folder, and it's pretty much the same, just with a few um, different steps. So I'm gonna hit open source, and go back to this and let's say that I just did some video and I wanna back up this Canon folder. So I'm just gonna click the folder, click open. So now you can see it scanned both of those. If I look, there's two videos in this list. So it remembered where I wanted to save it. I could change that if, if I needed to. Um, and it's already got my, uh, my settings that I, my preset. It's showing my preset here. So once I'm ready, I'm gonna hit add titles to queue. It's gonna add both of those and I hit add. And now if I wanna do that other folder, I'll hit open source and do that Sony folder. So now it's gonna scan those three videos. When I'm ready, I'm gonna hit add titles to queue. There they are, hit add. Now when I pull up the queue, it's got all of these videos and I'm gonna hit start. And now I can walk away. I can, I can do this at the end of the day or maybe on my lunch break or whenever, let it run overnight. If I have a lot of videos to process, I'll just kick it off overnight and let it run, let it back up, keep, keep Dropbox open. And as long as I pick the Dropbox folder as my destination file, it'll do all this automatically. So I can just go to sleep and the next day it's all gonna be there and be uploaded and I'm done.
So there you have it. That's how to use Handbrake to convert and compress your video files. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you see all my future videos. And please share this with other people. If you know someone who does video and this would help, please share it with them. I'd love to help them as well. Now, if you do video and you're not quite sure how to monetize it, how to make money with video, I've created a blueprint that lays out how to use video to generate leads on autopilot. So head over to glacierrockmedia.com forward slash blueprint and get your free copy today. All right, friend, that's all I've got for this video. I will see you in the next one. That's all I have to say about that. Make sure you silence your phone. Furries in there. Uh, so close. <laughs> I got an itch. Hold on. That's awkward. I say hosed a lot. You're hosed. <laughs> I said it again. Hosed. Every, I should show like a fire hose every time I say that and like spray. I should not have moved my chair. <laughs> Why did I move my chair? Okay. Blah.